Hello, and welcome to episode 4 of the podcast. You can read my writings at weigukenwei.com. Weigukenwei.com is my website where I talk about Korean and Korean American issues from the point of view of a Weigukin, a foreigner. So for full blogs, you can go there and read what I have to say. This is one of the few, if not the only, podcast that has the official language as Konglish, going back and forth between Korean and English speech. Today's episode is dealing with the topic of non-Koreans in Korea, specifically black Koreans in Korea. And this is inspired on some recent interviews that were done. There is a model who is gaining popularity in Korea at this time, who is from Africa. And in his interviews he is asked, how is he treated in Korea? So despite speaking full Korean in these interviews, he talks about how he has been discriminated against, how people have said some very rude and racist remarks towards him, and even the fact that sometimes he's referred to as Black Hyung. Now, Hyung, for those that are not aware, is what a male calls an older male who he views as his brother. But in this context, it seems that many people got from the interview that this is considered a racist term, even though it is not meant to be a racist term. But it raises the question about how Koreans view non-Koreans, specifically black people, and why is this so? So, the Republic of Korea, aka South Korea, is considered an extremely homogenized society. So what that means is, in South Korea, roughly 95-97% to 97 of the people that are living in South Korea are considered Korean. That means that it's very rare to be in Korea and see a non-Korean, let alone someone who is non-Asian. Now, does that mean that everyone is just 100% purely Korean? No, it does not. I remember talking to Najima about this, and she mentioned that it was estimated that maybe around 25% of all the people in South Korea are considered pure Korean. So that means that many Koreans, even though their parents are both Korean, are of mixed heritage. Some being mixed with Japanese, others being mixed with Chinese. And so years ago, the older generations were actually taught their name in Chinese and had to learn how to write their name in Chinese because of the Chinese influence on Korean tradition, Korean culture, and even Korean language. But many people take pride, and in some cases extreme pride, in being Korean. And so it leads to the question, oftentimes, of how do Korean people feel about black people? For many of the younger generation, there's little to no prejudice that's there, according to some. What you'll find when you watch different interviews, listen to different podcasts or vlogs, is that the experience of people are different depending upon who they are, how much Korean they speak, and depending upon where they are. So, there are stories of younger Koreans being annoyed at the fact that there are people in their country that do not appear to speak any Korean and it causes them to have hatred towards them. Others are very curious about what other cultures are like outside of Korea, outside of Asia. So, for them, they don't have that much prejudice. In my experience in being in Korea, I would say that I didn't meet anyone who had that opinion that I was somehow someone who didn't belong and that was kind of a different experience from a lot of people. What I've been told by a number of people, what you'll see in a number of interviews, 
with different people is that the perception that many Korean people have is that if you are black you are from Africa especially if you have a darker skin color and so people tend to associate Africa with things like poverty and things having to deal with death in depressing situations other Koreans have actually traveled to other places so some have been to places like Australia United States Canada where there are definitely more people with darker skin there than there are in the Republic of Korea and so for those people that have traveled outside of Korea more and outside of Asia more they some of them have been the victims of racial prejudice themselves and so they tend not to judge other people on the surface because they've been judged that way and they don't like that feeling so they don't try to judge others that way others who do not have that type of opinion and even some that have traveled outside of Asia still have racist views and so there's a popular video that's starting to go viral where a man does a man on the street interview with different Korean people about what they feel towards black people and what they think society in South Korea feels towards black people and so many have agreed that their views of black people are really shaped by the media and so what images do people see when they see black people in the media a lot of times not just in Korea but in other parts of the world when people see images of black men they see men that are violent men that are willing to fight men that are angry and men that are poor and so this isn't an accident this is something unfortunately that has been done on purpose and so you look at entertainment when you look at movies that quote unquote portray black life then people tend to be violent angry and poor when you look at images of black television shows especially before the 90s oftentimes the families were poor struggling had different issues and the reason for that was people felt like well that's reality that's not the real reality of all black people in America or in the world but that is what people have been shown or one of the things that has spread all over the world is rap music hip-hop in the music videos that spread the fastest or the songs that spread the fastest are normally ones that portray drug use violence possibly abuse towards women verbally and other things like this that are very negative the negative view of Koreans towards black people is something that some date back to the Korean War and so that means that these images only help to keep this image of negativity towards black people particularly black men going and so this information is from me talking to different Korean people and talking to different black men that fought in the Korean War and so the stories that I was told is that around that time period Korea was still very very homogenized so the homogenization of Korea isn't something that's new it's gone back for a long long time and so it was during the Korean War that many people saw someone who was non-Asian in person for the first time and so it was during these experiences that it really shocked some people they didn't know what to think and so at that time period a number of black soldiers that I've talked to said that they were dating and a lot of their friends who were black and in the military were marrying 
Korean women. Very, very beautiful Korean women. And so this was said to have been seen as a problem, an issue. And so how is this issue going to be fixed became the question. And so that is when a number of black men said the negative propaganda about black people really started in Korea. And it was designed to make Korean people think twice about allowing their daughters to marry servicemen that were black. And so some Koreans have told me also that they were told negative things as children about black people to try to keep them away from black men specifically. So families would be told things like black people are poor, black people are violent, black men are angry, they're going to treat your daughter badly. Therefore, whatever you do, don't let your daughter marry somebody black. Let them marry somebody who's white. And so, when you have that mindset planted, that seed planted in people's mind, and then when they watch these television shows, these music videos, and they're seeing aggressive, violent men that are in poverty, it causes people to feel that that's the absolute truth. And so because of that negative seed that was planted years ago, combined with the images that are being shown, it causes many to be prejudiced. And so that's a situation that the younger generation, they don't grow up necessarily with that mindset. Because of the internet, because of them being able to see different aspects of black American culture or black people outside of the violent images and music videos or outside of people being poor and starving in Africa. So definitely the younger generation knows that there is a difference. Younger women are seeing that a number of Korean women that did marry black men are still happily married and they're openly admitting that they're more attracted to black men. You have young Korean men who are openly admitting that they're more attracted to black women. So those walls are starting to come down as far as prejudice. And as I said from the outset, is that going to be everyone's view? Unfortunately, no. There's still going to be some that are racist, that are older, that are younger. But in my experience, and again, when I was in Korea, I was in Gangnam, I was in Dobongu, I was even down by the sea in Kwanyang. So, traveling throughout Korea, riding the bus, riding the subway, for me, I didn't notice people staring at me, pointing at me, making fun of me, or saying rude remarks about me, unlike other people who have had that experience. So, the experience that you would have in Korea if you're black just varies. But I don't want anyone to take away from this or any other conversation that all Koreans just think negatively about black people. And if you go on YouTube, you'll see a lot of Blasian couples where it is a Korean person marrying a black person. And you are seeing even more and more Korean men marrying black women as well. So, as rare as it is now, those walls are coming down and it's going to be less rare in the future. And so, one of the things I think has to happen, there's actually a couple things. One, you can't believe everything that the media tells you. One of the things people need to remember about the media is that media companies are businesses. They are owned and they are designed to appeal to a certain demographic in order to make money. So for a media company that has a certain demographic that's perhaps racist, they want to see information that will make them more racist or feel like, yes, my racism is justified. And so that's why certain media companies spin things one way or spin things another to appeal to a certain demographic. And so 
just because the media says something doesn't mean that it is the absolute truth. It could be something that is slanted, it could be something that is made up, and that is why the internet is so popular and so necessary. Because now you can get things that are unfiltered, and you can get things that are being posted by people as it's happening, so you can see and make your own mind up about how things are, instead of being told what you need to think. So that can be a very, very powerful tool for so many people. And it goes the other way as well. Because so many people are told all Korean people eat dogs and cats, all Korean people eat other weird things. And a lot of that is not true. A lot of that is designed to get other people who are not Korean to be scared of going to Korea and finding out what Korea is like for themselves. A lot of it's designed to keep people away from wanting to marry someone Korean. And it has a negative image of Korean people throughout the world, unfortunately. And it's not true. You'd have to take time to investigate Korean culture for yourself to find out what the truth is. Just like Korean people have to take time to investigate for themselves what other cultures are like. And that's why the second big thing is communication is absolutely necessary. There's so many times that I've described my friends that are Korean to people, and without telling them that I'm talking about Korean people, people automatically assume I'm talking about other black people. So, it goes to show you that a lot of times people have things in common, you just don't know it, unfortunately, because other people have an interest in keeping you in the dark. But when you take the time and you take a chance to get to know people, one of the things that you'll get to notice is that there are similarities that you have with them. And that's a beautiful thing. And so, being able to talk to Korean people and find out what the truth is about not only the language but the culture in life in Korea and going to Korea and seeing it for myself definitely has a life altering effect so be sure to communicate be sure not to believe everything that you hear go out and live life for yourself so that concludes this brief podcast if you have any questions you can always reach me contact at wagokinway.com that's contact at w-a-y G-O-O-K-I-N-W-A-Y dot com. Please feel free to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. And I will talk to you again later. And always remember, the best way for you to get rid of your nightmares is to live out your dreams. Bye-bye.